uh, the professor is truly, truly a global professor now, a man of the world, as he calls in from the other side of the planet, spreading the gospel. I'm not sure which gospel it is, but he is spreading it over there in Croatia. So, Professor, I uh, actually ran into you at the airport, funny enough. Uh, we did. We did. Forever to check in and making me almost miss my flight. Uh, but what? What? I that know, was like awesome. that. Yeah, this is this is because Dan's new to being one K on United. So he was just happened to be behind us, and we were behind some people. I mean, it's interesting, Dan, because when you get to the airport and your people in front of you when you're checking in, and they're like, "Oh, there's a form I have to fill in," then you're like, "Yeah, I mean, um, it definitely uh, taught me to be strong. It built a lot of character for me." Um, you know, like, uh, the stuff that happened with my dad at a young age, you know, um, it's tough, but, uh, I also had a great support system at home with my mom, my stepdad and my sisters. Um, they all kind of helped me get through all that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it definitely built a lot of character and, uh, it just taught me, uh, you know, to just keep working hard and, uh, you know, striving for what I want to reach one day. And uh, thankfully, it's led me up to this point where I'm now uh, going to be playing in the MLR. And uh, being a professional rugby player was a dream of mine from a young age. I know, as I've said in, in previous <laughs> interviews, but uh, yeah. So I think the most important thing was that it it really helped mold my character as a hardworking, resilient individual. And yeah. Yeah, so basically to kind of get myself out there, I would go to rugby camp at Dartmouth every year. And at that camp, they usually have a ton of college coaches that attend and run the camp. Uh, I know it's a pretty well-known camp, around the country a lot of guys fly into new hampshire for it and um yeah so i would go to that camp meet coaches and that was like the beginning of it and uh i know scott stort who was my coach originally at ucla who recruited me would go to that camp every year um so that's kind of how the recruitment process started but uh my number one goal was to get into Dartmouth. Um, and then that just, uh, I thought I was going to get in, but unfortunately I didn't. So then um, UCLA applications didn't come in until late. So I uh, also had gotten into Penn State, who have a pretty good rugby program. So I was like 95% sure that I was going to Penn State with the slight chance that I get into UCLA, I was gonna go there. So I went on a full visit to Penn State, loved the school, it was a lot of fun. Um, but you know, I thought I was uh, selling myself short academically for how hard I've worked throughout high school. So thankfully I got into UCLA a bit late and then made my decision. I honestly, like, I didn't even visit the school. I had only been to California once for like a day or two, but I already knew just <laughs> through the grapevine that like, you really can't go wrong. Uh, it was a great feeling, honestly. Um, you know, initially um, when I got the call, I was obviously super excited and uh, you know, it was, just awesome news but I also had to stay focused on the task at hand which was preparing for the rugby town tournament which um yeah I mean as awesome as it was it was definitely still uh difficult to keep my head in in the task at hand um I thought I could have done better with that but you know it was just such awesome news I know I watched the draft with um a bunch of guys that I know from teams around the tournament. We had about like 15 guys in the room watching. And, uh, you know, they all cheered when 
when the first pick was announced and uh, yeah, it was awesome. You know, I, I watched Animal House before I came to the US, so that was kind <laughs> of, that was my expectation coming in. That's a high bar you've set. There. Yeah, <laughs> no, very high bar. Um, and, and you know, in, in some ways, I, I was very happy that I chose Kutztown University. I, I chose the university for first and foremost, the coach there, Dr. Greg Jones, who's been a, a major influence in my life over the last four years. And just, you know, I, I, I don't have any other family here in the US, so I wanted to m move to a place where I felt like I could be part of a family where I could buy into the structure of the program, into the core values that the program represent. And, you know, that's one thing that I that I really enjoyed about Kutztown. We rugby was a byproduct for us. We were focusing on on making, you know, good, uh, you know, contributing members of society, good young men. And, um, you know, Doc Greg's uh, Doc Greg Jones's uh, philosophy of go to work every day was something that just aligned with me. Um, and you know, the, he's he's done a lot for that program over the last 35 years. He's he's grown it into one of the powerhouses in the in the nation. And you know, playing with guys like Demonte Noble, Casey Renaud, you know, which of no, and then there's there's so many other um, of the senior players that that helped me and influenced me in my uh, while I was out there. It was um, it was an unbelievable experience. I, uh, I think the the nervous the nervousness came more from my end. You know, uh, sitting through that draft and. Uh, you know, hearing all these picks go out and then the last one comes through and, and that's you. I remember I was, I was actually, so I, I work as well and I was sitting in a meeting. Um, don't ask me what went on in that meeting because I was watching the draft the entire time. You know? And I was just so excited when, uh, when my name finally came through. Uh, but yeah, there was some, we had some initial discussions after my second game for the academy that they were interested in me. Um, and then, you know, I spoke to Kevin Battle probably about two weeks before the draft and we were just kind of, you know, he just wanted to make sure everything's all right on my end. And then the management um, staff from the guilty teams reached out. Adam Fryer reached out to me probably yeah. about three days beforehand and, um, you know, just uh, wanted to expl explain that they are interested in me, they are interested in drafting me. So I kind of got, uh, went into the draft. I don't want to use the word you're know, expecting it because you know you, you you can never expect an opportunity like this. It's it's always something that's it's just a blessing, you know. But um, I I went into the draft being uh, somewhat comfortable with with uh, what was with the outcome, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but my nerves were definitely tested towards the end of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, going into the year, my you know first and foremost would be to 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 crack the match day squad. Um, you know by by, by just Making sure that I can, again, as I as I've alluded to before, develop myself to the point where I can, you know, I can I can step up to the next level, and and I just think that you know, it it would be to to, to prove my worth to the to the organisation. Um, you know, I think that the the draft got me the seat at the table, and now it's turned to uh, now it's time for me to to earn my seat at that table. You know, so that that would just be be my my goal would be pretty simple, pretty straightforward, just earning my seat at the table and making sure that I can provide some return on, on the faith showed in me, you know.